Hello, Sharabutin. First, I would like to make a small introduction about who you are. Because in Russian MMA community, you are a very well-known figure, but some UFC fans might not know you. Can you please tell us briefly about yourself, about who you are? I guess let's start from the very beginning. How did you come to this sport and how you started practicing it? First of all, it's a great pleasure now that the UFC has linked us up. So now the UFC audience is also in my realm of influence. I am ready to take off in the UFC and to prove once again that the level of Russian MMA is by no means weak and we can compete with the best. I am really ready to go all in and show everything that I have. I am ready to show what I am capable of in the UFC. The stronger my opponents are, the higher my level of motivation gets. Your story is pretty interesting to me. From what I know, you've been offered a contract with some very good conditions. A lot of rookies get starting level money in their contracts. But in your case, from the jump, you got a very good contract. Can you please tell us something about the whole process, how it came through, how it all happened, because in my perception, it was very fast. First there were some rumors, and after a couple of days we get the news that the deal is done. Yeah, it all took literally a couple of days. Verbally, we probably came to an agreement within two days. Ali Abdelaziz contacted me and told me that UFC is interested in me. That they are ready to sign the contract with me and to offer me some exclusive conditions. And I don't even know if somebody else received it previously. I really liked those conditions and I am really happy that I got in the UFC. Thanks to Dana White, Mick Maynard and the whole UFC organization that they offered me these numbers made me happy and made my family happy. All my life I've been moving towards it to achieve something like that. Legacy, money, fame. It is very important to me and the UFC belt is everything that I need. How do you think? What made them so interested in you? Maybe Ali has told you that they offered these conditions because of this and that. And if not, how do you personally think? Why did you get such a contract? They probably have their own spectrum of how they choose fighters. Their own criteria. Is the guy talented in the fighting aspect? Is he a talented communicator with public? They probably look at all of those things. One thing is to show spectacular fights, and the other thing is to constantly maintain your media presence, and vice versa. One thing is to talk a lot, and the other thing is to really go out there and fight. The real reason why people come to the arenas is to watch us fight, to see how beautiful and how professional we are doing it. That probably is something that makes distinction between fighters. The fighting style, your charisma, it all adds some extra interest for the viewers. I'm ready to show my whole package. Even some of your partners have called you a hype machine. Tell us please, were the things always like that? Or at some point in time you understood that is the way to do business in this industry. You should draw attention not only with your fights, of course the fights are important, but outside the cage area is also important. I really started noticing that Instagram significantly affects our sport. Specifically subscribers, likes, the interest. Are you really followed on social media or not? It gives a huge momentum to the development of the sport. Promotional organizations really like the fact that you are followed, that you are watched. Since the moment I entered the pop MMA industry in Russia, I really started to work on my Instagram, to spend some time for the viewers, to show them my training sessions. But anyway, in this area I'm still pretty weak, and I will do my best to engage the audience even more. UFC has everything you need for it. They give all the best conditions for us to grow, to develop and to become even better. Tell us please some stories from your childhood days. From what I remember, initially you played soccer. And there was a situation when you got into a fight, then you were kicked off the team because of it. Can you please tell us this story in more detail? Because I'm sure many viewers want to know, how in the end did you get into the fighting industry? The main reason why I probably got into the martial arts industry were street fights. They really pushed me to do it. You had to defend yourself, your relatives, your brothers, your smaller brothers. And to not let them down. That's why we've been training.
But the thought about potentially competing at some point never crossed my mind. One day I rented some Pride FC DVD discs. I watched the fights of Fedor, Shogun. Those are the legends of the sport that got me motivated to get into this sport, to enter the cage and to show myself. When I was watching those fights, I was always questioning myself. Can I do it too? This question always tortured me from the inside. One part of me was probably saying that I will not be able to do it. This level is probably something unreal. But the other part of me was telling that I can. And it just remained to be seen in reality. Am I really capable of doing it? And the UFC is that one platform where I will show my skills. Do you remember the moment when your simple interest grew into somewhat of a more meaningful pursuit of martial arts career? It was probably my first loss. I looked at it as a hobby, I was fighting in the streets, I liked testing myself, going through some difficulties to overstep my limits. I don't think that throughout my whole career I've had a fight in which I lost clearly. To honestly say, yeah, I lost here. Every loss was somewhat doubtful and I did not agree with those results. That's why it was really hurtful, because I knew that I almost won. I could have won, maybe I could have done something better, I was always thinking about it. I knew I can do better and it was just an accident. Bad luck, bad day and so on. And this whole feeling suffocates you inside, it breaks you. Until you win again, it won't leave you alone. Can you tell us some details about your fights in Asia? Because in my opinion, it's a very uncommon experience. Yeah, I performed in China and Thailand. In China it was MMA, K1. But in Thailand it was predominantly Thai boxing. I think those were probably some hellish tournaments. You know, I would put it this way. After those fights that I went through, after those five round battles, after that I cannot be surprised by anything. No potential fear can shock me. When you are thrown into some stadium tournaments where you don't know any person, everyone around you is a tie, opposite of you stands a tie, with huge experience. You only know your coach and you still talk to him in sign language. He doesn't speak English, I don't speak Thai, so we only communicate in sign language. You have no support while you are in a five round dogfight. When you go through these types of fights, it gives you enormous experience. You don't give up no matter the conditions around you. It doesn't matter that you know nobody there. You shouldn't give up and you have to go ahead. And I think this way your story will not be forgotten. What is legacy for you? Can you maybe name one of your final goals? What do you want to achieve in this sport? You know, our sport is probably an unfinished book. Mixed martial arts are in constant development. So I want to bring into it some of my techniques, my strikes, something I excelled at, for people to know me due to it. That I brought something new to this sport, something interesting. It is an art and I hope to have the inspiration to create beautiful knockouts in my UFC fights that people would really enjoy. Initially I wanted to postpone my departure to the UFC. For one or two years I wanted to pirate, to fight in Russia, to take everything, all the pearls, all the gold. And then to go to America, to the UFC. But the Almighty gave me this opportunity and it happened straight away. The UFC has the main pearls, it has the main gold in the world, which is the UFC belt. If you get the UFC belt, you can get everything else. What are your plans? Which opponents do you want to see in the future? And do you plan to compete in middleweight division? Yes, now I think about the middleweight division, but we'll see. My weight is still holding up. In case my weight for the middleweight division will be too small, I will go to the welterweight, but if not, I will stay at 185, because there we have some good names. And I wouldn't say that guys at 185 are too big for me, they cut weight the same as me. Yeah, but as for me, I would say that Pereira is pretty big. 
Yeah, it is true with Pereira, but it also has some advantages and disadvantages. When a guy is big, he is a little clumsy. Pereira also has such a thing, he's a little sluggish, clumsy, and you can use this factor. After two or three fights, I hope to fight Adesanya. I would like to fight Marvin Vettori, Israel Adesanya, Pereira, and who else there is in the top of the division. Some good names. At least I will try to do everything that depends on me, and then we'll see what the Almighty has for me, if my health will allow me to do it. Initially, when the news about your signing with the UFC broke out, right off the bat, Russian media space was filled with discussions about, about your potential fight against Hamza Chimaev. What do you think about potential fight against him? Is it interesting for you? Because he is also a huge hype machine by himself. You know, I am interested in what the viewers are interested in. Otherwise, what do I have against him? Did he do something bad to me or what? Maybe I don't like his physiognomy and want to beat him down. No, only in the case when there is athletic interest. Maybe a belt is on the line. Big stakes, viewers want it, UFC wants it. Then let's go, but otherwise... This fight would be very interesting for the former Soviet Union countries. I don't know, we'll see if I will be successful in winning over the public.